In 2019, for the sixth consecutive time, Mercedes have won the Constructors' and Drivers' title double. An accomplishment that has rarely been done in Formula 1, and when it has been done, it's been done by the most successful teams in history. And surely this Mercedes team has to go down at the absolute least as one of the greatest teams in Formula 1 history. But are they the greatest team in Formula 1 history? Well, in today's video, I'm going to analyse exactly that and look at how they have come to be the most dominant team in Formula 1 right now, what makes them so great, and how they compare to other great teams in Formula 1 history. So if you want to find out from me if I think Mercedes are the greatest team in Formula 1 history, then make sure to check out this video. All before, though, we get into how great they are right now, we first must look at the story behind the success. And as well, before we really get into this video, I need to clarify that I am going to look at the history of Mercedes in Formula 1 up until their dominant period, not the history of the Brackley team. Because of course, before Mercedes inherited the Brackley team, they were previously Braun and Honda and BAR and Tyrrell. But let's be honest, without the money that Mercedes put in, I don't think the Brackley team would be anywhere near as successful as they have been. So this will be concentrating on the Mercedes-Benz company in Formula 1. Now of course after them withdrawing from Formula 1 in 1955 after the horrific crash at Le Mans, they returned to Formula 1 in 1994 officially. Only though as an engine supplier at the time to Sauber and later in 1995 they supplied McLaren instead. And before they got to winning world championships later on in the late 1990s, those first years with McLaren were very difficult, but they made progress year on year. And eventually got to the point where they could win races, and then got to the point where they could win races very dominantly and win world championships. As vitally with Mercedes power, McLaren won the drivers and constructors title in 98 and the drivers in 99. But then into the early 2000s, it wasn't quite that successful, the McLaren-Mercedes partnership in terms of winning world championships. But they were still winning races basically every season and competing for race victories most of the time. And even in a couple seasons in 2003 and 2005, McLaren-Mercedes could compete for the world championship, but the unreliability at the time of the Mercedes V10 cost them a lot. But of course, it was not to be. But when the McLaren-Mercedes partnership really started to go downhill was 2007, of course, with the Spygate scandal. Because that scandal, of course, with Mercedes being such a big backer of McLaren, brought down the great name of Mercedes-Benz. And so after 2007, the two started to grow apart. And eventually, after Braun won the World Championship in 2009... Mercedes bought the Brackley team and made it their own works team. And of course they had the goal of winning races and eventually winning world championships. But again in a similar way to McLaren in the mid to late 90s it was a very difficult period before they really started winning. As in 2010, 2011 and 2012 despite having a lot of money and a lot of great people working at that team... They were not producing the type of cars and the type of results they should have. But because they knew they couldn't win in the V8 era, they made a very smart decision in building for the new V6 turbo hybrid era that was coming in 2014. And they started work on that way before Ferrari and Renault and of course Honda. And developing the new V6 power units early on really did pay off for them as by 2014 they had by an absolute country mile the best car and they were the best team in Formula 1. As in 2014, 2015 and 2016 it was a rare sight that a Mercedes car was not winning the race if not getting a 1-2 finish and beating them on pure pace was near impossible. But the showcase of how great this team really is came after the new regulations for 2017. Because these new regulations were basically built to try and close the gap between Mercedes and the rest. And that did happen as Ferrari and Red Bull in 2017 and 2018 were a lot closer to Mercedes than they were before. But still, due to being very consistent and being such a great and hard-working team, they still came out on top 
in those two years. But then in 2019, there was yet another new set of regulations, but again, they hit it out of the park. But this time, they hit it out of the park big time as they turned up in 2019 with clearly the best car. And really since the first race of 2019, there's not really been any doubt as to who the world champions were going to be. And that is a brief history of Mercedes-Benz in Formula 1 since 1994 when they finally returned. But what is it that has made this team just so great and so hard to beat since 2014? Because it's not just that, you know, in the years before 2014, they were able to concentrate on the new set of regulations coming for 2014 a lot earlier. What is it that since 2014 has made them just so good? Well, of course, we cannot deny that between 2014 and 2017, in terms of sheer power, they had the best power unit on the grid. And that is mostly the reason why in 2014, 15 and 16, they did have the best car. The aerodynamic side wasn't that great at times in certain races, at certain tracks, in certain years, but the power unit was so fantastically designed that they were able to dominate. But also the reliability of that power unit has been a very important factor, especially since Ferrari have overtook this team when it comes to sheer power. And of course the reliability they have is such an important factor for any team in any era to win a race or a world championship. It's been very rare that teams in Formula 1 history have had poor reliability and still won the world championship. If you don't have it, your chances are very limited. The reason though that after the new set of regulations in 2017 with the aerodynamics Mercedes were able to stay on top is because of the sheer quality of their technical department. Now of course between 2014 and 2016 they had Paddy Lowe who is a good designer if he does have a good team and good backing around him. But if you look at the Mercedes cars in those years it probably wasn't the best car all the time when it came to aerodynamics. But again the reason they've been able to stay on top since 2017 is because they have massively improved the technical department by bringing in designers Aldo Costa and James Allison, designers who have won races and world titles before. And year on year, the aerodynamic package that Mercedes have brought since 2017 has improved, to the point now where without a doubt, they have the best aerodynamic package on the grid. And if you look at their technical department right now, it is probably the best in Formula 1. They don't have the best designer in Formula 1, who of course is Adrian Newey, but in terms of the technical department as a whole, they have the best in Formula 1. And that is why they've been able to replace their previous advantage in straight line speed with now an advantage of grip. One that Ferrari and Red Bull at the moment can't live with. But also we cannot deny that the people that have ran this team or been the higher ups in this team since they came back into Formula 1 as a works team have really helped this team become the dominant team they are. For example, Ross Braun really did build the very successful Mercedes team we saw in 2014 and 2015 because he put the groundwork in place before he left the team at the end of 2013 for that team to go on in the new V6 era to be the most successful team in the sport. And his decision making in terms of bringing in Lewis Hamilton and focusing on development for 2014 was so vital for this team being as great as they are. Another man that did contribute a lot who is sadly no longer with us was of course Nicky Lauda. Someone who was also vital in bringing in Lewis Hamilton who is right now of course the best driver in Formula 1. And also with Ross Braun in those earlier days helped shape what this team was going to be. Now with Toto Wolff who of course is the team principal of Mercedes I think... In the first two or three years, he really did have a difficult job in terms of handling the two drivers, but in terms of handling the way the team worked, it wasn't too hard. Because again, the groundwork for that success was put in really before he became the team principal. But his quality has really shown, probably since about 2016, in terms of the decisions he's made in terms of drivers and the way he has evolved this team. By again improving the technical department, keeping a very solid and good driver partnership and being able to run the team with an iron fist. 
And last of all is the drivers. Not that they are the last important thing in terms of how great this team is, but let's be honest, without the great team and car behind them, they wouldn't have that much to work with. But in giving Lewis Hamilton especially the great car and the great team he's had since 2014, they've allowed Lewis Hamilton to excel to a level that we didn't think was really possible with him. As since he won that first World Championship in 2014 for the team, he has really excelled to an all-time great level. By dominating in 2015, yes 2016 was not too great, but in 2017 and 2018, he had a very tough challenge from Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel, but still overcame it. And has also shown his sheer quality in 2019 as well. What really did help though in terms of keeping the team at a dominant level in the first few years was having a very competitive driver lineup in Lewis Hamilton and of course Nico Rosberg. Because those two were two drivers who were so ultra competitive and were pushing one another to, at times, another level. So even if the car at times was not quite quick or quick enough compared to how they wanted it to be, the drivers could still excel to another level. Yes, a couple times they did lose races because of how intense it got, but it did also help the team be as great as they are. And with Valtteri Bottas replacing Nico Rosberg in 2017, what the team have had since 2017 is a very similar working partnership to what Ferrari had in Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello. Two drivers who are very consistent and fast and again have a good working relationship. One with each other and two with the entire team. And all of that has helped contribute to the consistency of the Silver Arrows. But enough talk about how great this team is. Are they the greatest in F1 history? Well, let's first take a look at the greatest teams in Formula 1 history and how they compare. So first off, we'll look at Lotus, who dominated really Formula 1 between 1963 and 1978. As plenty of times in that period, they produced cars that were the cutting edge of Formula 1 and were so far ahead of other cars in Formula 1. As team boss Colin Chapman at the time came up with plenty of new, interesting and innovative designs. One of them of course being ground effect which is why they dominated in 1978. But if you do look at that 15 year period, they were absolutely the most consistent in Formula 1 in terms of being consistently fighting at the top. And if you look at these stats, you can clearly see that as they had 13 titles combined between those 15 years, and a very impressive 62 race wins in an era of Formula 1 where there wasn't that many races compared to now. And definitely when you think of great teams, you've got to think of Lotus. But now we'll move on to Ferrari, the Ferrari team between 1975 and 1983. Now I know the two dominant periods of Ferrari and Lotus do cross over, but... Lotus's dominant period was coming to its end around 1977 and 1978 and Ferrari's was only starting to really begin in you know 75, 76 and 77. Now this dominance period for Ferrari is more so in titles than it is you know sheer pace of the car and race victories. Because if you look at the Ferrari car in this period, it wasn't that quick compared to its rivals and wasn't quite like the Lotus in terms of being a dominant car. They were just able to win a lot of world championships in this time. And the only season I can really think of where they were absolutely dominant was 1979 where Gilles Villeneuve and Jody Schechter plenty of times were winning races if not finishing 1-2. But again, except for that, in terms of the pure pace of the car and results during a season, they never really dominated a season. But still in that time period, they had 9 titles combined and 36 race victories. But compared to everyone else I'm about to look at, this is probably one of the least dominant teams in Formula 1. But now we come to McLaren between 1984 and 1991. Now this period is... One of the most dominant periods for any team in Formula 1 history. Because not only did they win plenty of world championships in such a short amount of time, but in plenty of these seasons they did have a very dominant car. In 1984 when Prost and Lauda were fighting very hard for the world championship, they won most of the races. And of course in 1988 they won all of the races but one. 
and was sometimes many seconds a lap quicker than everyone else. And also in 1989 and at times in 1990, again, they did have clearly the best car. But what made this McLaren team so great is that despite at times not having the best car, because they were so great in terms of how the team was made up in the technical department, the driver lineup, and how the running of the team was, of course, from Ron Dennis, they were still able to win races and win world championships. For example, if you look at Alain Prost in 1986, he really shouldn't have won that championship in terms of the pace of the car, but he did because of how great he was and how great the team was. And looking at these stats right now, they are very impressive, again, considering how many races we had a season back then. Between 1984 and 1991, which of course is a seven-year period, they had 13 titles combined and 64 race wins. Now that is absolute dominance. And honestly, I think this time period for McLaren doesn't get talked about enough in terms of how dominant McLaren were between 1984 and 1991. Plenty of people like to talk about 1988, but again, if you look at between 84 and 91, they were really dominant. Another dominant team, though, was Williams between 1992 and 1997. Now, Williams in this period really did, most of the time, have a dominant car in terms of speed. In 92 and 93, their car was about a second to a second and a half a lap quicker. And at that point, doesn't matter how great you are, consistently over a season, you can't compete with a car that is that quick. The only thing in this dominance period that goes against Williams, in my opinion, in terms of a comparison to other great teams in history, is that in 94 and 95, despite having a very quick car, they didn't get the world championships they really did deserve. Yeah, they won the constructors in 94, but that was pretty easy for them to do. Michael Schumacher, of course, did take out Damon Hill in Adelaide, but again, considering the car they had, they should have been more successful in those seasons. And really, the only times they really dominated the World Championships were 92, 93, and 96. But still, between 92 and 97, they had nine titles combined and 52 race victories. And of course, since Williams' dominance period ended, they have not won the World Championships since. One dominant team that gets compared to this Mercedes team plenty of times is the Ferrari team between 1999 and 2004. Not only because it's the most recent example of a great team compared to this Mercedes team, but also because that Ferrari team is very similar to the current Mercedes team. In terms of having a very good technical department at the time, they had Ross Braun and Rory Byrne, a very strong team leader and team principal in Jean Tot. And their driver lineup at the time was very similar to this current team in Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello. Now, if you look at this time period, Ferrari did not always have the best car all the time compared to, say, McLaren in certain seasons and Williams. But what made Ferrari so dominant in this period was reliability. They finished so many races in this period, but also consistency. Because again, even if they did not have the best car that weekend, they were the most consistent, most reliable, and sometimes they won out of sheer consistency. And of course, it didn't hurt that much that they had Michael Schumacher at the wheel, a driver that basically built Ferrari into what it became. But in this period, they won 11 titles combined and 63 race victories. Now, even though this Ferrari team gets compared a lot to the Mercedes team right now, I don't consider this Ferrari team to be the closest competitor to Mercedes in terms of who is the greatest team in F1 history. To be honest, I do think the McLaren team between 84 and 91 was probably slightly better than this Ferrari team because the McLaren team had a better driver lineup and more of a dominant car in terms of speed. But still, that Ferrari team was pretty special. And the final dominant team is Red Bull between 2010 and 2013. Now, this team, despite winning the World Championships they did, they weren't actually that dominant in terms of, say, 1-2 finishes and actual results. For example, if you look at 2010, despite having a very quick car, so many times they allowed other teams to win who shouldn't have won based on how quick the Red Bull car was. 
If you look at 2011, yes, Sebastian Vettel was very dominant, but Mark Webber was rarely in a position to be right there with Sebastian Vettel, getting one twos consistently for the team, despite Red Bull having a quick enough car to do that. In 2012, they barely won the World Championship, and in 2013, yes, they dominated the second half of that season, but in the first half, they were pretty equal with Lotus, Ferrari, and Mercedes. But still, in terms of World Championships, they were successful. Eight titles combined and 41 race wins. But again, it could have been a lot more than it was considering how great that car was at times. And if you compare all of those teams to the stats of this current Mercedes team, this is how it looks. So of course, Mercedes have dominated since 2014 up until now in 2019. They have 12 titles combined and 86 race victories. And they have won at least, I think, three quarters of the races since the V6 hybrid era began. But is this Mercedes team the greatest team in history? In my opinion, yes, it is. The reason I think it is, is because if you compare it to the other great teams I've looked at, in terms of the speed of the car, they've had consistently the quickest car out of those great teams. Because in four of the five years Mercedes have dominated, they've had the best car. McLaren, for example, in their dominance period between 84 and 91, they didn't always have the best car. They only had the best car in probably three or four years in that seven year period. And let's be honest, this Mercedes team, they're going to continue to dominate and most likely continue to have the best car. And they've also been able to be very consistent and reliable, again, despite not having the best car at times in certain races and seasons. And for any opposition driver and team, if you're going to beat Mercedes, you have to be basically near perfect to even think of beating them. And with those other dominant teams we've looked at, it wasn't quite the case. But also one final thing is that compared to those other great teams, if you look at the percentage of race victories Mercedes have had since 2014, if you compare it to those other great teams, you know, Lotus, Ferrari twice, McLaren, Williams and Red Bull, Mercedes have been the most dominant. And it's not like this Mercedes team is going to stop dominating at the end of 2019. They're probably going to dominate for another two or three seasons at least. So even if you disagree now that they are the greatest team in history, they're going to be it anyway. But right now, I think they are the greatest team in Formula 1 history. And congratulations yet again to them for winning six consecutive Constructors and Drivers titles. I know plenty of people out there do hate Mercedes because of how dominant they have been. But in a similar way to Ferrari in the early 2000s, I think once they stop dominating in many years to come, we are going to look back at this team in a very fond way for how great they were. But guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think this Mercedes team is the greatest team in history? If so, let me know why. And if you don't think they are, again, let me know why. And let me know if you don't think this Mercedes team is the best in history. Who is, in your opinion, the best team in history? And also, just so you guys know, second to Mercedes, in my opinion, is McLaren between 1984 and 1991. But yep guys, that is it for this video, but don't forget to subscribe for more coming up on the channel. Early next week I'll have another video about Red Bull and Honda. And also don't forget to like this video as well. But until that video on Monday guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. goodbye.